Hey kids, welcome to Crossways Kid Venture Kids Online. I'm Lauren and this is Maya. Hi everybody! In case you're new at Kid Venture Kids Online, I should let you know that Kid Venture Kids is a great place for kids to learn about God, faith, and even life apps. What are life apps? Life apps are just our way of talking about what God can work out inside of you to change the world around you. Things like love, respect, and forgiveness. And don't forget that we do that with a lot of faith-filled fun to help you grow your faith in Jesus Christ. And don't forget, putting your faith into action kid style. Hey, you can even stand up, sing, and dance with the worship music. And now it's time to get started. Let's start with a drum roll on your knees, everybody. Three, Three two, one. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Let's go. I know I'm gonna make mistakes in this life I live But you never leave me, you forgive I won't always get it right, it's alright Cause no matter what I do I'm always loved by you
singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise.
Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, I'm Caleb, and I'm so excited to invite you along as we explore my Bible. <laughs> the Bible is an incredible collection of 66 books, history, poetry, words of wisdom, personal letters, and eyewitness accounts. God inspired dozens of people over hundreds of years to record these words. In the Bible, we discover how God created an amazing world and made people in God's very own image. But people turned away from God and the world was broken. From the very beginning though, God had a plan to bring us back into relationship, to wipe away the wrong things, the sins that we've all committed. God's forgiveness is an amazing, breathtaking gift. And I've got four Jesus stories that show us what true forgiveness looks like. We get started in the New Testament book of Luke. <clears throat> Here, Jesus is eating dinner with important religious leaders. Then a woman comes in and interrupts the meal to show her love for Jesus in a most unusual way. The religious leaders though are shocked, but Jesus flips the script to say that they should be more like her. We stay in Luke for our next story. Zacchaeus is a tax collector, and he's living in a fine house with all the things at the expense of his fellow Jewish people. But even though Zacchaeus is the most hated man in town, he wants a glimpse of Jesus. And since he's short, well, climbing a tree seems his best option until Jesus spots Zacchaeus in his high perch and calls him out in front of everyone. Now we head back two books to Matthew. Here, Jesus tells the story of a servant who owes his master 10,000 bags of gold. What? There is zero chance the servant can pay it back, so he begs for mercy, and the master completely forgives the debt. Zero dollars owed. The servant's overjoyed until he finds someone who owes him a few silver coins. That's an easy thing to forgive, right? You'd think. Back to Luke for our final story. We wrap up with another story from Jesus, who tells about a wealthy man and two sons. The younger son demands his share of his father's money right now. That's a huge insult, but the father gives him the money. The son heads out to live the high life with the best things money can buy until the cash runs out. Now he's hungry and alone in a foreign land. After all he's done, there's no way the son can go back home, is there? God is ready and waiting to forgive you no matter what you've done. And when you're forgiven, it's a lot easier to decide that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. That's how forgiveness works. And I can't wait to see how it shows up in you and me. What's the big idea? Hey, what's the big idea? Everyone needs forgiveness.
Lab. This week, we're talking about forgiveness. Well, we take a look at the story of someone who knew just where to go with her messy life. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about forgiveness, which is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Speaking of forgiveness. Yes? You know how we're all works in progress? Of course. And you remember that beaker full of delectable M&Ms that you left on the counter yesterday? Oh, right, thanks for reminding me. I totally want a snack right now. Yeah, about that. Wait, that's the beaker that the M&Ms were in? This is the beaker. Where are the M&Ms? You did not eat an entire beaker full of M&Ms! I was only gonna munch on a handful, but they kept calling to me. I cannot believe you ate all of my M&Ms. I feel terrible. Bet your stomach did too. True story. I'm really, really sorry. I'll get you some more. I forgive you. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna get you some more, I promise. Cool. But I know something we can do with it first. Something better than M&Ms? Yep. Let's, Let's make it. it. Step one, take a candle and place it in the center of the dish. Step two, put a few drops of light food coloring in a container of water. Because around here, we love food coloring. Then, pour the water in a shallow glass dish until it just covers the bottom. Step three, light the candle. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Grown up alert, grown up alert. <laughs> yes, make sure you have a grown up present. Or you may accidentally do something that requires a lot of forgiveness. That was a little dramatic. Yeah. Step four. Cover the candle with a glass beaker. A conveniently empty glass beaker. Then the final step is you're going to put a few drops of dark food coloring around the rim. What's with the water? It's all getting sucked up into the beaker. Pretty cool, huh? What just happened? Science! As the flame consumes oxygen, the pressure inside the beaker is decreased, while the pressure outside the glass stays constant. Since the outside pressure is greater than the inside pressure, the water gets pushed up into the beaker. Taking away the water in the dish. Oh, just like how forgiveness takes away all the bad things you've done. I see what you did there. I love a good visual. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem. God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. And while most people loved him, the religious leaders grumbled. That Jesus was changing the way they'd always done things. And they didn't like it, one bit. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. I'm Chloe. Hey Chloe. The religious leaders, some called Pharisees, were keeping a sharp eye on Jesus they weren't completely sure about him yet. So, one of them, a man named Simon, invited Jesus to have dinner at his house. But even though Simon gave Jesus the honor of inviting him for dinner, Simon left out something important. See, at this time, everyone wore sandals, no socks. And when they walked the city streets, they got whatever was on those streets all over their feet. Use your imagination. Ugh. So, Usually, when a guest came to your house, servants would wash their feet right away. As a sign of honor, you might give them a kiss and anoint their head with oil. But Simon didn't do any of this for Jesus. And someone noticed. 
A woman from town had heard Jesus was going to be at Simon's home. She lived a difficult life and done many wrong things, but she knew that Jesus' love and mercy were greater than her sins. She desperately wanted to see Jesus, so she came to Simon's house and saw where Jesus sat at the table. Now, you've got to understand something about how people sat to eat at this time. Tables were low down, so you actually sat on the floor. In fact, you might even lie down on your side with your head over here by the table and your feet back over here behind you. The woman had bought an expensive container of perfume to pour on Jesus' feet as a sign of love and honor. She must have thought it was terrible that no one had offered to wash his feet and wanted to do it herself. But she didn't have water or a towel. So this woman actually used her own tears to wash Jesus' feet and wipe them with her hair. It seems strange to us, but it was an incredible sign of this woman's love and devotion. After washing Jesus' feet, the woman kissed them. Then she took the perfume she'd bought and poured it out over them. As the strong, sweet smell of perfume filled the room, Simon and the other guests watched the woman. They were shocked by what she was doing. Simon said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him. He would know what kind of woman she is. She is a sinner. Simon thought this inside his own head, but Jesus knew exactly what Simon was thinking. So he told a story to help Simon understand. Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher. Two people owed money to a certain lender. One owed him 500 silver coins. The other owed him 50 silver coins. Neither of them had the money to pay him back so the lender let them go without paying. Which of them will love him more? The room was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. At last, Simon spoke. I suppose the one who owed him the most money. You are right. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water to wash my feet but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman has not stopped kissing my feet since I came in. You did not put any olive oil on my head, but she has poured this perfume on my feet. Wow, Simon got called out. Simon had invited Jesus out of curiosity, but he hadn't shown him any love or respect. This woman's many sins have been forgiven. She has shown that she understands this by her great acts of love. But whoever has been forgiven only a little, loves only a little. Your sins are forgiven. (gasps) Um, excuse me. Who is this who even forgives sins? The other guests whispered and exclaimed in shock. But Jesus smiled at the woman with deep love in his eyes. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The room was filled with religious leaders who were quick to call the woman a sinner. But they didn't look at their own lives. They didn't see their pride and hard hearts needed forgiveness just as much as the things this woman had done. The end. I gotta be honest, all the feet washing and perfume stuff seems a little bit strange, but she was all in for Jesus. Exactly. She saw how much she needed Jesus. All the religious leaders missed it. They thought they had it all together. They didn't think they needed Jesus or his forgiveness. So what's our part in this story? Jesus made it clear. Everyone needs forgiveness. Not just the guy who robbed a bank or the school bully. All of us have done things wrong. We've all messed up. And those wrong things, big and small, have broken our relationship with God. They make us feel far away from God. We all need forgiveness. It's why God sent Jesus to be here on earth with us. Jesus showed us how to live. He's the only one who never sinned. And then Jesus laid down his life for us. When Jesus rose to life again, sin and death were defeated. When you choose to follow Jesus and ask God for forgiveness, God wipes away the wrong things that you've done. God looks at Jesus' perfect life instead of your sins, and says that you don't have to pay for those sins anymore. That's the most amazing thing ever. So don't miss this. 
You've done wrong things. You need to be forgiven. But because of Jesus, God is ready and willing to forgive you and wipe away the wrong things you've done right this second. That's amazing. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye, Bye Chloe. Chloe. So here's the thing. Everyone needs forgiveness. Just like you forgave me for the M&Ms. Wow, thank you. Can I have a few? A few. Okay. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. Oh, Colossians 3.13, put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Welcome to Creating with John Ross. I'm John Ross. It's funny how that worked out. <laughs> Today we're finishing up our mosaic. It's been a long process, but very rewarding. We'll take one of our happy little circles here and give it a little pat. <laughs> Thank you, little circle. You're gonna bring joy to so many people. What's that, little circle? You're saying you're glad you're not a square? I'm glad you're not a square either, because then you'd be useless. We're gonna place you right here, little friend. Oh, don't you look cheerful. A cheerful little circle. Now I think you just need a couple more friends and we'll be all finished. Hi, how are you? Oh, you're very round today. One more. We're getting so close to the end now, you can feel the excitement from all of our little circle friends. Hi, this looks like fun, Thank you, John. Brandon. We're almost finished with our happy little mosaic here. Oh, do you mind if I no, put Brandon, one No, Brandon, that would be just great. There. That looks happy. So happy. Glimpses of me by John. <laughs> it was an ordinary day. I was about to do another episode of the so-and-so show when Brandon walked in the door. Hey, John. Sorry I'm late. Whoa. How's it going? 
Whoa. What? Wait, I literally just typed. Brandon walked in and then you walked in. Oh. What are you doing? Are you writing a book? Oh, well, maybe. We'll see where it goes. Hey, you should write a mystery. Mysteries always do well. That's a great idea. Yes. You know what? I'll think I'll write one of those classic mysteries, you know, from the 1940s. You know, something a, a little more old, you know, so that it... Brandon? <laughs> okay, uh, it was a dark and stormy night. Whoa. Brandon walked in through the door. Hiya, John. What's cracking? <laughs> he took one step and tripped on a roller skate. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> what? What in the world? Who put this there? Why, I oughta? All right. Oh. Okay, let's try again. Uh, oh. Brandon walked in through the door holding a freshly baked cake. Hey, John, I baked you a cake. Mmm. There you go. Oh, thank you. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. <laughs> what kind of cake is that? It's coconut. Don't you like it? No, thanks. Oh, man, now what am I gonna do with all this cake? Why did I do that? Who can say? I baked you a cake. <gasps> it's chocolate. Delicious, I bet. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. I'll finish it later. <laughs> Why? Have, have you got other plans? Hmm. You better believe it. I would do anything for John. Like buy him chips and other oh. snacks. Yes, I would do anything for John. Even dress up like a cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No. Meow. Yep, yep. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> enough of that. I don't know about you, John, but I am exhausted. And I have no idea why. What? Uh, uh, it's Bible story time with Kellen. You guys have had an interesting day. Not really. Haven't done much. What have we done? You got a story for us today, Kellen? Of course. Seriously, I can't remember anything about this. Then show. take it away. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like being given a do-over, a fresh start, a clean slate, which is what today's Bible story is all about. It is a story about when Jesus was invited to have dinner at a home of a Pharisee named Simon. A Pharisee was an expert in God's law. They loved rules, which is great, but sometimes they thought that they were better than other people. But still, Simon invited Jesus, so Jesus went to dinner at Simon's house. Now, there was a woman in town who had lived a sinful life. She heard Jesus was close by, so she went to the house, found Jesus, and did something a little unusual. She started to clean Jesus' feet. Well, I'm pretty sure they did not have vacuum cleaners, but the woman did sit on the floor and clean Jesus' dirty sandaled feet. And not with a bowl of water and a washcloth. 
She washed Jesus' feet with her own tears and dried them with her own hair. (gasps) Yep, you heard me right, with her own hair. And before you wonder if this was a common practice back then, it was not. She also kissed Jesus' feet and poured perfume on them. She was truly honored to be in the presence of Jesus. On the other hand, Simon was not okay with what he saw happening in his house. He said to himself, if Jesus really were a prophet, he'd know the woman touching him was a sinner. So Jesus told Simon a story, a story about two different people who owed a man money. One owed the man 50 coins and one owed 500 coins. Neither person had enough money to pay the man back. So, the man let both people go without paying. So whether they owed 50 coins or 500 coins, they were off the hook. They were both forgiven. After the story, Jesus asked Simon, which of the two people would love the man more? the one who owed 50 coins or the one who owed 500? Simon replied, I suppose the one who owed the most money. Yup, good answer. Jesus turned to the woman who had washed his feet and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water to wash my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman has not stopped kissing my feet since I came in. You did not put olive oil on my head, but she has poured this perfume on my feet. So I tell you this, her many sins have been forgiven. She has shown that she understands this by her great acts of love. But whoever has been forgiven only a little, loves only a little. Boom. After that, Jesus told the woman her sins were forgiven because of her faith. The woman knew what it felt like to truly be forgiven, and she had to show Jesus how unbelievably grateful she was. What'd you think, fellas? Uh, I gotta say, feet always weared me out. (laughs) But her just doing that for Jesus without a second thought of what the other people in the room might think? That's pretty incredible. Yeah, that just proves how grateful she was to be forgiven. You know, I I don't think I'm always that grateful, even though I've been forgiven a lot. Mm. It's true. All of us are a work in progress. We all need forgiveness sometimes. I need forgiveness every day. Like even today, when I was making Brandon dance like a cat. (laughs) You were what? That's a great story, Kellen. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Dance like a cat? Uh, yeah. You, you, you know how sometimes when you type something in a typewriter and the things you type actually start happening. <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> what? Reveal the question. Oh, hey, the question is, what does it feel like to be forgiven? Let's find out. (laughs) Brandon, do you forgive me for having a little fun at your expense today? So weird. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I I forgive you. (laughs) It feels good. Totally. When you have something hanging over your head that you know you should ask forgiveness for, it it really does weigh you down. And, And when that weight is lifted, it's an incredible feeling. Yeah. All of us should know what it feels like to be forgiven. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for all of our sins. So be grateful for how loving and how forgiving God is. Yeah, and we'll see you next week for a brand new show. Let me see that thing. Uh Uh-oh. John enters playing the spoons and break dancing. You can take my chips, but you can never take 
by talkies! Still delicious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the big idea? Hey, what's the big idea? Everyone needs forgiveness.